Welcome back, Disc Golf fans, to the 2024 Music City Open presented by Lone Star Discs. We're here for the second round Chase Card Plus highlight coverage on Gatekeeper Media. Thank you guys for joining us. I'm Nathan Queen, again joined by Andrew Fish. Yeah, this was a, uh, a little bit of an overcast Saturday, and the MPO lead card ended up pushing dark due to some circumstances outside of our control. Uh, but geez, beautiful course out here. Definitely long and technical. You see after one round, the leaderboards, a uh, lot of folks in contention in MPO. Holland Hanley out to a three-stroke lead in FPO. But lots of folks still in the mix. Yeah, you saw Simon Lazat with the two-stroke lead over the field. And then as we've seen the rest of the year, pretty tight. Attacking this slightly over 11,000 foot course, you're gonna wanna get a strong start with some birdies early. Still possible to birdie on the back, but it gets a little bit tougher. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, folks who are putting together good rounds on the front don't have to push nearly as hard on some of the more treacherous holes that play back into the wind on that back nine. We get a great view of one of the par fives baskets there before we see Gannon on hole one. And I like the way he throws that fairway driver and Heiser release to drag it from left to right. Waisaki likely to do the same. We know he loves his Anheuser releases. Yeah, really using the wide part of that fairway the whole way with that turnover shot there. We'll take a look at it again. You can see it's pretty much down the center the entire flight. Just misses that last tree. Can't draw it up much better. Chris Dickerson. After going roller off the tee, has a blind upshot here on the par four fourth. Hugs the tree line the entire way, nearly runs it in for two. We see Ricky with the more standard shot or what you expect to see the forehand as he catches some cage. A bit off of standard there. Both should be right here as Chris is able to collect on his birdie. Continuing with Dickerson on the next hole. And able to jump it in from circle two. Yeah, nice look on a difficult green to really park. As you can see here, Ricky ends up long also. It's got kind of slopes down towards the back. But good putts there is Chris Dickerson with a similar putt here on the next hole, but on the elevated basket. Slightly different style circle two putt there. Still yeah. effective. I, I like seeing him slow down the pace into that elevated basket. And now over stable forehand, catches good edge and runs back into the circle. Yeah, that's how you like to do it. Here on a tough par four tenth. Jake with the long circle two look, 44 feet or so. And we'll stay with Hebenheimer on hole 11. Definitely a player with bonus power to attack this green. Still has to get a little lucky through some trees to crash. Wow. Waisaki on hole 12. Found maybe the lowest spot on that green, but able to convert. Yeah, that little grouping of trees there is pretty tricky. Speaking of tricky, hole 14 might not be the right word for it, but a nice drive here from Chris. And you see how much of this tee pad he's using all the way to that front left corner to make the angle of his shot uh, as minimal as possible to get back to the left. We're back to circle two, Dickerson again here on hole 15. A third style of circle two putt from a knee falling forward. This guy is something else in Tennessee. Yeah, ready to go. He's got his Tennessee colors on today. And Waisaki playing into a headwind downhill and a long 520 in my opinion. 
and somehow climbing back uphill on the end. Yeah, worked out well for him as you catch a little bit of that dark that the card ended up playing in. Uh, Chris Dickerson made his way up there onto lead card with that solid round today. And now we will check out, check out the action from FPO's round two, checking in just under 10,000 feet. One of the longest tracks on tour, certainly for FPO. Some of these holes perhaps a little bit ambitious in their design, but many of them still attackable for birdie. Yeah, and with it being harder to get the birdies, you really have to make sure you keep it clean. I think that's gonna be the best way for the ladies to really score and make moves today. Yeah, I agree, especially on uh, the par fours. Don't get out of position. Give yourself manageable approaches. Rebecca Cox on hole two, elevated basket. And that looks great. Yeah, super clean, confident putt. Catherine Anita, let's go. Another circle two putt here on hole four. Downhill, scary putt towards that water. And a good knockdown on five. No Catherine Anita this time, but still equally good scoring. Yeah, moves us to hole six. Cat Merch's second shot approaching the basket on this sloped downhill green. And it is the Cat Merch Show thus far. This forehand swings back in. And a favorable roll. Pin high. Get to Rebecca Cox's drive here on hole seven as well. Got a look from the other side. Yeah, a little straighter line on that rather than flex. And she's going to get up there just outside the bullseye. See if Merch can capitalize. And will indeed. You're hot, Cat Merch. And Cat Merch continuing the highlights. Yeah, still showing off here on hole 10. We get to another circle two putt here. Rebecca Cox in the wind, able to handle it and knock it down. And talk about wind, Nathan. Yeah, it's strong headwind like you were talking about here on 18. Got Rebecca throwing Ballista Pro out there. Oh, and able to sneak just underneath those branches. Good check into the green and a heat check on the putt. All right, solid way to finish the round there from Rebecca. As you'll see right here, that put her back on that chase card coverage for the third and final round here. Yeah, it's been a great weekend here in Nashville at the Music City Open, presented by Lone Star Discs. Uh, boy, this Mill Ridge course has a lot of teeth, but is very attackable. I look forward to seeing round three highlights tomorrow. I do as well. Thank you guys for joining us. For Andrew Fish, I'm Nathan Queen. We'll see you guys out there.